the core scientific part of the project proposal for Marie Skorowska Curie Action Postdoctoral Fellowships is its Part B1. According to the standard application form, Part B1 is composed and assessed according to three evaluation criteria – excellence, impact and quality and efficiency of the implementation. We shall now consider all these three criteria and make some additional recommendations and tips beyond the template in order to succeed in this high-quality competition. Within the excellence criterion, the following areas should be reflected. Start by formulating a short introduction to your topic, then formulate the main research idea and define specific objectives or research questions reflecting how you intend to proceed. Describe the features where your project goes beyond the state of the art and justify why it is innovative and ambitious. Set realistic goals. Your project must be feasible within the project term. In this part, present the methodology you are going to apply. If your project is interdisciplinary, explain how the expertise and methods from different disciplines will be brought together to benefit the project results. Comment on the gender dimension and other diversity aspects. Remember that the gender dimension relates to the content of the planned research, not to gender balance in your team. Also address open science practices, meaning early and open sharing of research data. Explain how all project research outputs will be managed in line with the FAIR principles and which repositories you will use to store them. Mention your data management plan. For guidance, you can consult Horizon Europe Programme Guide. Be aware that the European Commission has launched a new publishing platform called Open Research Europe. To prove the quality of your supervisor, demonstrate that he or she is an expert in a particular area, include key elements from his or her CV, such as international collaborations, experience in supervising or training, especially PhD and postdoctoral researchers, participation in projects and publications. You can refer to the MSCA guidelines on supervision. Describe planned training activities. You are supposed to be trained not only in the scientific aspect, but also in your transferable and soft skills. Concerning the transfer of knowledge, the training program must be beneficial for both sides. Explain separately the transfer from the host to you, what you will learn, as well as what you will bring and share with your peers and students at host. In case of global fellowships, it will be a transfer of knowledge between you, your host institution in a third country, and your host institution within your return phase in Europe. Add also information that you will prepare, together with your supervisor, your career development plan. In the last part, within the excellence criterion, discuss your existing professional experience in relation to the proposed research project. Choose only major achievements from your CV, which will distinguish you from other applicants. You must convince the evaluators that you are the right person to carry out the planned research and that at the same time you will also gain new skills and knowledge. This section needs to be coherent with your CV. Any career gaps and weaknesses should be transformed into arguments why your proposal is worth supporting. Remember that MSCA postdoctoral fellowships are focused on career development. Let's have a look at the impact criterion. First, present the way in which the fellowship will contribute in the short, medium and long term to your professional maturity. Simply speaking, where you want to see yourself in two, five, ten years from now and later. Explain how the fellowship will enhance your employability. Outline what will be the next steps in your career and what you will learn in the PF to get there. Your career perspectives. For example, what type of grants you are going to apply for, 
whether you would like to pursue an academic path or work outside academia. In the second part, describe dissemination and exploitation activities aimed at reaching the scientific community. Describe also communication activities aimed at broader public in order to inform and reach out to society and show the positive impact of your work on everyday life. Do not forget to mention intellectual property rights and protection measures, how these would be used to support exploitation. For advice, you can contact your technology transfer office. Mention you will prepare your plan for all those activities. In the next part, explain whether the project results will have significant impacts beyond the immediate scope and duration of your project. In terms of expected scientific impacts, your project can contribute to specific scientific advances across and within disciplines, create new knowledge, reinforce scientific equipment and instruments, computing systems, and so on. In terms of expected societal impact, you can contribute to the decrease of CO2 emissions or to the decrease of avoidable mortality, improve policies and decision-making, or raise consumer awareness. And in terms of expected economic or technological impacts, you can bring new products, services, business processes to the market, increase efficiency or profits, decrease costs, contribute to the setting of standards, and so on. Try to give an indication of how widespread the outcomes and impacts are likely to be, identify the target groups and their size, as well as the value of those benefits, for example in terms of the number of additional healthy life years or efficiency savings in energy supply. Let's move to the implementation. Divide your work plan into several work packages, which must be consistent with particular proposal sections. We recommend that you define two four research work packages, but also non-research ones. Within your work package project management, add an obligatory deliverable data management plan, also mobility declaration and final report. State also regular meetings with your supervisor. Within your work package training and transfer of knowledge, you should have your career development plan. Within your work package dissemination, exploitation and communication, there should be your plan for all those activities. Prepare your gun chart where you indicate timing of work packages and their major components, such as deliverables, milestones, secondments, non-academic placements. Identify possible research-related but also non-research risks to successful implementation and your concrete plan B, so-called contingency plan, consisting of mitigation measures. Within the last part, include a short description of your institution, address hosting arrangements, which support services will be available to you. If your host institution has endorsed European Charter for Researchers and Code of Conduct for the Recruitment of Researchers, mention it in the proposal. Mention also which infrastructures, logistics and facilities will be offered to you for the good implementation of your project. You can refer to the Part B2, Section 5, Capacity of the Participating Organizations, where infrastructure, logistics and facilities should be described. When writing your implementation section, ask project office at your future host for the information you need. It is crucial to reflect all information described in the pertinent parts of the evaluation criteria. Be aware of the weights of all the criteria. It is not all about excellence. What is not written will not be assessed. Ask for support your host institution, especially your future supervisor, project managers and successful applicants. Keep trying and do not be discouraged from resubmitting if you are not successful the first time. Regarding any question or for consultation, you can always contact us, the national contact points in the Technology Center.